Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. The first hockey team started here in Bemidji and it was played really on the ice. It was kind of a town team, and more than one even. And the, the very beginning, it was a case of being part of the winter carnival that they held. And it was down at the uh, foot of 3rd Street, where Paul Bunyan's statue is right now, and right out there. That, that's how that kind of got going. And then, of course, uh, by 1936, a rink, city rink was built, uh, which was a combination curling and hockey arena. And that curling part of it well, existed until uh, 1967. But uh, the hockey rink was a victim of a roof cave-in because of heavy snow. And as a result, 1950 was the end of hockey in Bemidji. And uh, part of that also was the fact that the Bemidji State University, well then it was called Bemidji State Teachers College, uh, started playing hockey in 1947-48. And then it, it ended in 1950 with the demise of the arena. Well, you see, President Bangsberg, when he hired me, uh, is an amazing man. He was 34 years old and he was president of this university. And uh, he, in essence, convinced me to take this position. I was, at that time, head coach at the University of North Dakota. And uh, what appealed to me was the opportunity to build a program. There's a vast difference between perpetuating a program and building one. And I, because of where I grew up, uh, on the border, International Falls, Fort Francis, Ontario, I understood totally what was happening to this game uh, in the state of Minnesota. So you know, I understood what he was talking about as far as the, the culture and why we should be doing this. And that was the reason I came. And of course, you know, the reason I stayed because it's, it's difficult work building a program, but it, it's more rewarding than perpetuating a program. The administration provided $100 for sticks and some old jerseys that were used by, uh, I believe, football. And the goalie equipment was donated by the International Falls Minnesota Youth Hockey Association. And that's how hockey started here at Bemidji State University. And uh, then when they resurrected the program in 1959, that picture right there with the football uniforms. And that's uh, Vic Weber, uh, who was the coach, and uh, he's, uh, there he is. We've had three coaches here since 1959. And this is Tom, of course, the current coach. This is uh, retired coach, Dr. Vic Weber, and this is me. It has had a profound effect. And it goes uh, further than just the, the building of rinks. We have to talk about the new city arena in the John Glass Arena that came uh, into line in November of 1967. And so that was the time when hockey at the high school level was just starting to evolve. It began about 1964, really outdoors, for Bemidji High School playing. And of course, uh, hockey at the university started up uh, again in 1959, but it was outdoors. And as far as the university was concerned, they wanted to start that program because they had put in a request to build a hockey arena, which was called really a John Glass Field, well, it was a field house at the time. It was subsequently named John Glass shortly thereafter, but it was a combination dance studio, uh, wrestling, locker room facility, and a hockey rink, which had an indoor track around it. Not a very good one, but it was an indoor track. And um, that, came into line in 1967. And, uh, high school started to play their games in there and they practiced in the city arena. 
We were on the scene with a rink at a time when high school hockey in Minnesota was just bubbling and gurgling, and it was growing at a pace you know, as fast as a prairie grass fire, really. And we were sitting here with this facility. And in those days, there were only seven teams in the WCHA. We had seven Division I hockey teams in the West, and that included Michigan, Michigan State, Michigan Tech, Minnesota, the University of North Dakota, Colorado College in Denver. That's all it was. And, and that's the way it was in the uh, uh, 50s and 60s. Well, they couldn't handle all the players that were coming up. It's consequently, many, many outstanding players simply were not able to find a place to play. And we were here. And that is why we were able to get those players that were definitely Division I player caliber, of course, and um, uh, th those players went on to make the U.S. national team. Some of our players, the U.S. national team, the U.S. Olympic team, played in the uh, National Hockey League and uh, played in Europe. Good heavens, you know, that was a, a sign that this game is going places, it's, it's growing, and we just happen to be there first. We were fortunate in having that indoor facility, but my first year we were outdoors while this John Glass Field House was being built. And of course we had to, I was involved with the uh, first hockey conference that we played in, the Beavers, and uh, um, it always is a case of finances and funding a program. We were fortunate in that almost immediately when we were inside that the fans gravitated to the building and we were able to generate a considerable amount of, of income. This would be uh, like 47, 48 and you could buy a season ticket Good for six games. That's kind of they didn't play much in those days, and dollar uh, eighty, tax included. What other sport where you're standing three, two and a half inches up off of the surface on about an eighth of an inch of steel, and you don't handle the puck in your hands or the the ball in your hands? It's on the end of a sixty-inch stick. <laughs> it takes some skill to do that. The puck when shot with a, with a slap shot, can travel uh, up to and over 100 miles an hour. And you can't run out of bounds. So you have to be kind of quick. You know? <laughs> uh, and, and you have the goaltender. That's totally unique. Not to mention the Zamboni, which seems to attract the attention of, of uh, really young, young people, you know, children. But it's, um, it's just uh, it's part of our culture because of our geographic location, our climate, and it's a long, long winter. I just can't even imagine what it would be like to endure a winter with no hockey. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4, 2008.